Okay, so let's go ahead and set up that WordPress site that we were talking about in the last video. Let's go ahead and click on this guy. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down to Compute Engine, and then really any of these will do, but I'm going to go to VM Instances. And then from here, you'll find that there's a Marketplace button down on the bottom. Why don't you go ahead and go find that, and then return to the video. Okay, the next step is going to be to search for WordPress. And what you're going to want to do is just search for the WordPress just by itself. And in here, there's a lot of different options. The one we're looking for is by Google. However, there are a couple of them. You want the one that is just plain WordPress. So go ahead and click on this one. And go ahead and make sure that this is what you see or if this is a little bit after this video was recorded, these fees may have gone down slightly, but we want to make sure that it's a very small instance. Go ahead and pause the video now and go find the WordPress instance that we're going to set up. Next, let's scroll up to the top and click Launch on Compute Engine. This will take us to something that looked a lot like the instance setup that we did when we did our VM lab earlier. So, in this screen, we're going to go through these fields pretty quickly because we've seen most of them, and I just kind of want to show you around real quick. So, the deployment name, we're going to leave the same, WordPress 1. However, if you were deploying multiple of these single servers, you might want to name them something a little bit more descriptive. The next is the zone. This is not really important for our particular setup. However, if you are doing a, uh, this video course from, say, like a European country, you might want to select one of the European systems. It'll just make things a little bit faster and snappier as you're working on it. However, it's not really a big deal whichever one you pick. It'll just be where all of your resources are located at. I'm going to go ahead and just select US Central 1 and the subzone of F. Now, here you can actually start customizing some things. For instance, let's say you know that you're not going to be doing a whole lot of work on the server and you want to just go ahead and bring down the memory to 2.5 gigabytes. So that's what we're going to do in this particular case. And from here we want to move forward and put in our administrator's email address. I'm going to use greg at gregharrington.com as that's my address. And I'm also going to install the PHP admin because I am not super familiar with configuring it from the command line. So let's just use the interface. And all of the settings else, I'm going to keep just default. I'm also going to allow in the HTTPS traffic. So I guess not all default. From here, I want to go ahead and just click on deploy. And this will take us to the deployment manager and it'll show us how our resources are all being set up. So let's go ahead and click on deploy. And this is gonna take just a little bit. So let's take a look at this screen and try and understand some of the various things that's going on. First off, earlier we talked about deployment manager. This helps you manage all of the various different subsystems that get created when you deploy a pre-made package. It also helps you keep track of information that's going to be specific to your package. For instance, in this case, we'll want to know what MySQL user is, per in, perhaps if we're doing something inside the VM and we want to connect directly to it. We'll definitely need to know what our temporary root password is so that we can get into our site for the very first time. And once it's all set up, you'll see that all of these pendings change to their actual values, and then we can use those to go ahead and get into our site for the very first time. Over here on the left are the resources that are being provisioned. So once they're all provisioned, this will all be filled in. As you can see, some stuff has already started to fill in, and we're just waiting for one more little thing, which is probably the PHP my admin setup. And there we have it. It's now popped in. So now we are all set up to go ahead and set up our WordPress, and we practically haven't done anything yet. So this is pretty cool, and it's the same for Joomla and even some very, very, very advanced images that have to do with AI training and generation of computer models or even 
big data systems. So this is an excellent time to pause the video and go set up your own deployment of WordPress. So now let's take a look at a couple of things. First off, I'm gonna hold the control key, or if you're on a Mac, it'll be the command key, and I'm gonna click on both of these links here. This way I have the administrative area in one tab and my website on another one. What I wanna do here is show you what we could do in case we were accidentally hacked or if some user of ours was malicious and took our system out from underneath our feet. We would want to restore to a backup. So what we're going to do is we're going to back up our system, vandalize our own site, and then we're going to restore our site just to see how easy it is. So the first thing we're going to need to do is actually set up our backup. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here and we're in deployment manager still. So our real assets are not here. They're over inside of the Google Cloud Compute Platform and other areas. So to set up our backups, we're gonna to need to leave the deployment manager. So we'll go back up to our navigation menu. We'll go down to the compute engine and then we'll select VM instances. Go ahead and pause the video and catch up with me. Now, I just wanna point out a couple of little things. This VM is just like any other VM you're going to spawn, except for it has some stuff pre-installed on it. So that's the only real difference. But if I wanted to SSH into it, I could just click this SSH button and go ahead and collect my, connect to my instance and review the log files on there or even really install more packages. So let's say I wanted a WordPress site, but I also wanted some custom packages on here. I could go ahead and get in here, install the extra packages that I want, and then create my own image, which then I could use to replicate WordPress with my own settings and my own configuration multiple times. This might be useful if you're setting up a product to sell. However, in this case, that's a little advanced for this course. So what we're gonna do is I'll just go ahead and close this and disconnect. I just wanted to show you how easy it was to use it. Now, the thing I wanna do here is set up a backup of this system that runs both nightly and take an initial snapshot of it as it's set up right now. So the first thing I'd like to do here is take a snapshot of our server so that we can vandalize our server and then restore it. So one of the things that you have to understand is that a virtual machine by itself is not a hard drive and all of the other components that go with it. Some of those components are basically kept in kind of separate areas. So for instance, in this case, the hard disk is stored underneath the disks section. And you can see the old one for my test instance and the WordPress virtual machine that we just set up. And what we'll do is take a snapshot of this and it'll appear down here. And what a snapshot is, is a snapshot is a point in time image of the disk as it stood so that you could basically say I want to take this server back to exactly the state of when the snapshot was taken. So in the way that snapshots are done what you're going to want to do is do it from the disk screen. It's just a little bit easier to find all the buttons so in this case for the WordPress VM I'm going to click on this little actions dot 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 button and click create snapshot. So here we have the ability to name the snapshot. So I'm gonna name it snapshot one WordPress, just so that I know that it's the WordPress snapshot that I'm looking for. And you can give it a description, which is optional. I'm not going to. It automatically selects the source disk that we wanted to. If you went into this from the snapshot screen, you'd have to select this right now. And you can also choose where it is stored. In this case, it suggests multi-regional as the default value. That means this snapshot is stored everywhere in the globe. It costs a minuscule amount more, but if you want to be spinning up servers all over the globe, for instance, your United Kingdom customers will want Europe-based servers, while your American customers would probably like to have the latency associated with American servers. 
and we'll go ahead and let it be encrypted and we'll just let Google manage this. In some more advanced configurations, you can keep your own keys off of the Google platform and then that way even Google can't decrypt your uh, saved materials inside of snapshots and various disks. So we'll go ahead and click create and then that's going to take us back to our snapshot list screen. Now these can take a little while to create because it has to make a full physical copy of all of the data on side of the disk and the compute instance is still running so it has to do some cool operating system magic to make sure that nothing bad goes wrong. So what we're going to do is use some video editing and we'll uh, skip forward to when this is done. And there you have it, the snapshot's done. Notice that the snapshot is not the same size as the disk size. There's only a meaningful one gigabyte of information on the system. So Google automatically makes your snapshot smaller based on the size that it needs to be to contain all the data, but it also remembers the disk size that it was created with. So next, let's go ahead and open up our WordPress system and make some changes. And then we'll restore the snapshot and undo those changes. So first thing I'm going to do is go back to VM instances and then I'm going to select my WordPress VM and click into it. And now if you scroll down you'll see several custom metadata objects that are the pieces of information you're going to need to get into your system. So in the deployment manager these were shown as links over on the right hand side. The other way to do this is by going back to the deployment manager. I tend to like the deployment manager a little bit better so we'll go back to there to look up our various pieces of information. So if you search for deployment manager you'll come back here and you'll see the WordPress deployment that we created yesterday and when I click it open you'll notice that I have a site address and my admin URL and those are things that weren't presided in that metadata because they're based on the VM in real time. So let's start by opening up both our site and our administrative URL. So let's take a look at the site. Here it is, WordPress on Google Compute Engine, just another WordPress site. And it's just a background image and nothing really going on here. So what we want to do is we're going to go in here and we're going to vandalize this website and then create a restore from one of our snapshots to undo the damage that we did. So if I move over to my WordPress administrative console, you'll notice that it's a standard WordPress distribution, but they've gone ahead and created a username and password that are different than the ones that would have been as part of a default installation. So this makes it more secure right off the get-go. So I can simply copy and paste over my information and it will let me in. Now here I am already into my WordPress system and I could start immediately customizing it. So this is a good place to pause and get caught up to me. You should have both your WordPress site opened in one tab and the dashboard opened up in another one. Okay, so let's go ahead and click the customize your site button and what we're going to do is we're going to change this site identity tag. If you didn't see me click on that, it's this first one right here at the top and then I'm just going to change something here and I will put Greg was here. Please make sure this gets undone. So there's the vandalizing that we'll do to our site. So I'll go ahead and click publish immediately and it's automatically going to be available on our home page now. So let's say that this was either a hacker or just some innocent mistake inside of your organization and you wanted to undo it. Let's take a look at using that snap snapshot to create a restore of our previous website. Okay, so we have our freshly vandalized site. Let's go back to the compute engine section of our console and we want to go to snapshots because these are our backups. Now we have a backup that we took like right when we set it up and it did not have this Greg was here stuff. So let's go ahead and close these out for now and what I'm going to do is restore a snapshot into a VM. 
So first, I'm gonna go just turn off this WordPress instance. The reason I'm doing this here and now is A, I wanna save a little bit of money, and B, I wanna show you that it's really a whole new VM that's showing the restore after we're done with it. So this is a good time to pause and follow along. So just go ahead and check this guy and click stop. And then it'll take just a little while to stop. It won't happen immediately, but it should happen within a few seconds. And while that's going on, I'm gonna go back to my snapshots tab where I'm going to start the process of spinning up a new VM based on this snapshot. So first, let's go ahead and click on the snapshot and then we can click this Create Instance button. In this case, I'm gonna call it WordPress Restore. And we'll just add a one for good measure. I'm gonna go ahead and check both the Allow HTTP and HTTPS access. And we'll use the same settings that it suggests, although we could customize this again if we wanted to. And now I'll go ahead and click Create. Notice that the previous one has fully stopped now, and we're not gonna turn it back on. In fact, we'll go ahead and clean it up here in a minute. 